Church, say amen. amen. Turn with me, if you will, amen, to that scripture that was read for our here in Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, verses 28 through 32. Matthew chapter 21, verses 28 through 32. And the word of God reads, what do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. After, and, and even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. Father, we come now asking you to speak a word unto your people. Uh, we wait to hear your word. We wait to hear your voice. So, Father, we ask that you take these my words of preparation. Pour upon them your Holy Spirit. That we might hear what you have to say to us. That we might hear what we have to do. In the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. I want to preach today as the Lord shall God in this. Just go. Just go. Turn to your neighbor and say, just go. Just go. When we look at these parables, parable is something that tells a story being told in a simple and fresh way. A parable is not something about something that's reoccurring in real life. But it's a one-time fictional event in which it re the ending remains true to life. Parables are usually narrated in the past tense. And although they don't begin with these exact words, once upon a time, many of them are just like that. Parables which give reproof speak plainly of the offenders and judge them, get them to judge themselves out of their own mouths. One such parable is found in the Old Testament. Well, Jesus was the master of parables, but he was not the origin of the parables. Parables were in the Old Testament. One such parable is found in 2 in, in Second Samuel chapter 12. It's a famous Old Testament parable and an example of a parable. When, when, when it talked about this man, when Nathan went to David and told David a story, he said, this man had, this poor man had one little ewe lamb, and this rich man had many lambs. But the rich man took the poor man's little lamb and killed him and, and for, to, for, for his uh, 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 feast that was, he had invited his friends to. And then he said, well, to ask David, what should you do with such a man? David did not know that Nathan, amen, was talking to him. And out of David's own mouth, David said, that man shall be killed and everything he has given to the other man's family. But what David did not know is Nathan was addressing his issue. That he had slept with Uriah and he had took Uriah's Bathsheba. And he had Uriah killed on the front line. And so once David said uh, that man should be killed, 
He condemned himself because of the parable. He condemned himself out of his own mouth. And, 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 and Nathan said, that man is you. And he went to the top of the roof and began to pray and ask God for forgiveness. For he had sinned against God and against heaven. And, and, and so it's, it was hard. Can you imagine? Let me put a pin in it right there. Nathan, Nathan was not afraid to speak truth to power. David could have had Nathan killed right then and there. But Nathan knew that he had God on his side. I wish I had some folk in Washington, D.C. that were less afraid of Trump and more afraid of God. That's not afraid to speak truth to power. I mean, not afraid to tell them that what you're doing on the border is wrong. Not afraid to tell them that you're making all of this money, but you're not channeling none of it to the poor. Can I help me, somebody? And the thing is, me, he has deceived so many. But then Nathan was not afraid to speak speak truth to power and I don't care whoever's in power we must understand don't be afraid to speak truth to power because God has more power in the tip of his finger than all the power that he, they have been giving them as a matter of fact the only power that they have is the power that has been given to them and allowed them to have by the power of by, by the power of God Hey, 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 amen. Remember when, when, when Jesus went to the leader and the leader said, I have the power to destroy you. Jesus looked at him and said, you don't have no power except the power that is given to you by my father. Help me somebody. Don't you be afraid to tell somebody. I don't care who they are. If your boss is wrong, your boss is wrong. Somebody help me. Amen. If you don't give me no raise, I'm still going to tell you you ain't right. And if you get right, God will bless you. Amen. Amen. Parables are simple stories. They were very persuasive parables are kind of like a once upon a time story amen they usually uh, are narrated in the past tense amen typical beginnings of parables are things like this amen there was a rich man see you could put a once upon a time in front of that once upon a time there was a rich man amen and once upon a time there was a certain creditor once upon a time a, a man had, had had two sons amen once upon a time a sower went to sow seed amen parables always begin like fairy tales can I talk about it amen but they always end with a reality and a truth amen God in the parable was often represented as a ruler he's represented as a judge he's represented as a parent, the owner of a vineyard, amen, and, and, and the people of Israel were depicted as servants, as children, or a vine, or a flock, amen. That's why Jesus said, I, I, I'm a, I, I, you are, I, I'm a, what? I am a branch, you are the vines, amen, amen. The judgment, the judgment of God was always represented by the harvest, or a reckoning, amen, and God's reign was always a feast, or a wedding feast, amen. We must know how the parable breaks down these little stories amen together with the lord's prayer and the beatitudes are the best known words of jesus the key to understanding this parable though of the two sons amen it lies in defining who the lord was talking to Amen. Looking at the context, if I can exegete this text just for a minute. Amen. Looking at the context of this passage, the chapter begins with Jesus coming into Jerusalem. Amen. On his horse. Amen. With them shouting hosannas and, 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 and hallelujahs because he was the coming Messiah. Amen. And after entering, amen, with, with those hosannas and hallelujah, he goes into the temples and has an act of righteous indignation when he begins to clean the temple, casting out all of those that sold in the temple say you're nothing more than thieves and robbers and, and my father's house is a house of prayer amen he's messing up some stuff now amen after that he curses a fig tree amen which some say represented Israel amen the fig tree having no fruit was a strong symbolic a point of Israel's religious leaders they had all the religious re religiosity amen of being spiritual but they didn't have any fruit if they were really amen can I talk about it had fruit they wouldn't want to stone that woman that was caught in adultery walking around calling themselves the sons of Abraham can I talk about this thing a minute in other words we better watch out and you better watch out and I better watch out amen when you find folk that have so much spirituality but they don't have any fruit they're like the fig tree amen their leaves are good and the branches are good but there is no 
fruit, amen, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. They don't have any fruit because they would not repent and they would not be obedient to God, amen. So whatever they did, they did in disobedience and unrepentance. And let me say this, don't, if you need to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you're sitting here right now knowing that there are things in your life that you are doing that are not according to God's will and God's way that keep you from having a closer relationship with God, you need to let those things go and like John the Baptist said, repent ye for the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. Be baptized for the remission of your sins. And so Jesus basically told the religious leaders, the chief priests and the elders, amen, and those that were questioning his authority, amen, he said, sinners will enter the kingdom of heaven before you. So now the stage is set for a showdown. And in this context that Jesus tells three parables, Amen, because they're questioning his authority. The first parable that he told them was that of two sons. Then he talked about the tenants. Then he talked about the wedding feast. And each of these parables is told to the Jewish religious leaders and illustrates their rejection of Jesus. And each pronounces judgment on Israel, amen, for their rejection of their own Messiah, the one that they were waiting to come. Amen. Now, the parable of the two sons, that's where we want to park this today. The parable of the two sons is spoken in the temple to religious leaders, the chief priests and the elders. And Jesus says to them, this is what Jesus says to them. What do you think? What do you think? In other words, pay attention to what I'm getting ready to say. Because there is going to be a question that follows, amen, what I'm about to tell you. And he said, what do you think? In other words, listen to this. Take note of this. Amen. Pay attention to this. He said, a man had two sons. And he went to the first and said, son, go work in the vineyard today. And the son answered him, said, I will not. Ain't going. Hallelujah. Church, say amen. Why do people say no when God asks them to do something? Why do they refuse to respond to the will of God in their lives? I, I, I don't know what it is. Maybe we're too busy for God. I, I, I don't know what it is. But, 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 but we got to understand. It's like the children say, when Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. Amen. I, I'm going to put it this way. When Jesus say go, nobody should say no. Amen. And he only asked him, watch this now. He only asked his son to go and work in the vineyard today. He didn't say go and work in my vineyard every day, all day. He just said today. In other words, I don't know what you had planned today, but I need you to go and work in my vineyard today. Obviously, there was something about the vineyard that needed some work. Help me, somebody. Can I talk about this thing a minute? Now, 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 when you say no to God, watch this. I, I, let me, let me pull somebody here so y'all can understand this. Jonah said no to God. And his, his disobedience to God landed him in deep water. In, in other words, he wound up in the belly of a whale, amen, until he repented and became obedient to what God wanted him to do. Then the, the God allowed the whale to spit Jonah back out. You don't have to believe it. The Bible says it's true, and I'm taking it. Somebody say amen. Can, can I talk about this thing? Jonah said no to God, and he wound up in trouble. Don't say no to God. Amen. You may not understand why God is asking you to do what he's doing. Amen. You might think it's impossible for you to do it, but whatever God is asking you to do, just know that there is an incredible blessing waiting for you on the other side if you would just do it. But you've got to have uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the wherewithal to say, God, I don't know why you're telling me to do it, but I trust you. I don't know why you're telling me to do it, but I have faith and I believe that it's going to work out for my good. I don't have I, I, I don't know why you want me to do it. Seems like I can't get to it. I'm not going to be able to complete it. But I got confidence in you that if you take me to it, then you will take me through it. I wish I had some praying folk in here. Hey, amen. Uh, uh, the first son uh, and he asked the first son and the son answered and said, I'm not going. I'm not going. Uh, 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 I'm not going. I'm not going. But the word of God says, watch this. But afterwards, he repented. And he went on. Some, somebody say amen. In, in other words, he thought about what God was asking him to do. 
and, his, and he went on and did what God was asking him to do, although he reluctantly went. He did not want to go, but he went on anyhow. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't be afraid to go on anyhow and do what God is telling you to do, even though you may not be in your heart saying, I can't do it, I can't make it, I can't take it, I won't be effective. You got to go ahead and trust God and go do what God tells you to do. How many of y'all know that God tells you to be saved? Say amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you need to be saved. You need to be saved from your sins. In other words, God said, put your sins away and I will bless you. I will take you, pick you up, turn you around and make something beautiful out of your life. And so why we want to keep on grinning and sinning when God says, I want you to go and give your life. Amen. Amen to me. Amen. And in service to me, I will bless you if you just do it. Amen. That was a song that I liked and it was a very song that was that was instrumental in my salvation. It was from the whinings, and the song was, If I labor, God is going to give me a crown, crown. And it goes on in the refrain, and said, I believe I work well in the vineyard. Sun is going down. That was a song that was instrumental in my life. It was a whining song, amen. I love that song. I take that song and I run with it. And that's my life is based on that song. I'm going to work while it's day because nighttime comes when no man can work, amen. Time is winding up and time is winding up in your life. You've got to get busy for the Lord. Now, you've got to work in the vineyard. Now, let me say, the vineyard is not the church. You ain't never seen no vineyard growing in a house. Anybody grow vineyards in your house? No. The vineyard is outside of the house. So don't tell me the only work you do for God is in here. That's not where the work is. If you're going to work in the vineyard, you got to go through those doors and start talking to people on your way. Somebody help me, somebody. For the harvest is truly plenty, but the labors are few. Some folks think the only time they're doing the work in here, that's going to get you. No. This isn't the vineyard. Ain't no, ain't no vineyard in here. This is the house of God. This is the house of prayer. Where's the vineyard? It's out there. How many of y'all willing to go work in the vineyard? How many of y'all are willing to go work in the vineyard? Come on, give God some praise if you're willing to work in the vineyard. The first son, he said he was going. He said, I ain't going. He disrespected his father's will, is disobedient, disrespectful, rebellious. But he said, I ain't going. But he went anyway. Now, that brings us to the second son. All right. The, the, now watch this. The son that said he wasn't going, amen, but he turned around and repented and went, went. This son represents the common people who repented and did the will of God when they heard the preaching of John the Baptist. That's who this son represents. The people that heard John the Baptist and repented of their sins and were baptized for the remission of their sins and listened to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then there was a second son, and it says, and he went to the second son, since the first one didn't go, he went to the second one. He probably wanted them both to go, amen, because you can get more work done with two than you can with one, amen. So he went to the second son. He said, well, maybe I can at least get one to go. He said, and he went to the second son and said the same. I want you to go work in my vineyard today. And the second son answered and said, I'm going. I'm going to go. Yes, sir. Use all the respect there was. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going. But he didn't go. How many of y'all got kids like that? They say they're going to do something, they don't do it. I wash the dishes. Yes, ma'am, I wash the dishes with all the courtesy and respect. You get home, the dishes still in the sink. Help me, somebody. They said they were going to do it, but they didn't do it, didn't they? Clean your room when you get home from school. I'll clean it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. She come home, and the room looked the same way it did for when they left. Help me, somebody. I know I'm preaching this thing. This ain't just children. Y'all do the same thing. Hey, man, hey, can I talk about it? Can I talk about it? Adults do the same thing. You say you're going to do something, but then you don't do it. Hey, Amen. This son said, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. Yeah, I'm going. Huh, where's the vineyard? Show me the vineyard. That's where I'm going. Yes, sir, I'm going. Where is it? Which vineyard? Where you want me in the north? You want me, where you want me on this side of the vineyard? Hey, Amen. Where you want me to go in the middle? Where, where's, where, where you need me, Dad? Where you need me? Because I'm going. I'm going. I ain't like my brother. I ain't like him. I ain't like him. I'm better than he is. You should have asked me first. I'm going. But he didn't go. He expressed obedience, but he actually disobeys and refused to go to work in the vineyard. How many of y'all here? 
Said you're going to do something, but when it's time to go, you don't go. You start evaluating what I have to do first or what I need to do or what needs to happen in what? My life. Amen. Instead of just going, turn to your neighbor and say, just go. Just go. God knows what else you have to do. He knows your prayers before your prayers have even told. He's the one that set the day before you. Amen. And so the second son initially expressed obedience, but actually disobeyed and refused to go work in the vineyard. This son represents the leaders of Israel who claimed to be obedient, but they rebelled against the will of the father and they would not repent. Amen. The ruler's profession was very zealous towards the will of God. We're the sons of Abraham. We're the church. We're the ones that's in the church. We, 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 we go to church every Sunday. We know Jesus. Amen. But you won't go when he tell you to go. Amen. They did not repent of, of, their water, of what they were doing. They were, they were steep in hypocrisy. Amen. They want other folk to do what they would not do themselves. Amen. But the ruler's profession was very zealous for the will of God, but they utterly refused to enter the work of the kingdom at the voice of John the Baptist. They did not do it. Amen. Look what the word of God says in Matthew 3. Amen. Chapter, uh, uh, chapter 3 verse 79. It says, but when he saw but when he saw many of the Pharisees, this is John the Baptist, but when John the Baptist saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, you broad of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come. He said, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Amen. And do the do not think that you can say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. I will tell you that out of the stones, God can raise up the children of Abraham. In other words, they were trying to say that, they, that uh, John the Baptist was telling them, y'all want me to baptize y'all, but y'all ain't doing no works. Amen. Worthy to be baptized. He said, first go and bring some fruit. Hallelujah. Watch this now. First bring some fruit that's worthy of of, of, of repentance and then I'll think about baptizing you. In other words they were doing a lot, amen, with the zeal of God upon them but they weren't producing any fruit. Amen. Amen. And so Jesus asked his hearers, he said, which one did the Father's will? The one that said that he was uh, uh, not going to go but went or the one that said he wasn't going to the one that said he was going to go and didn't go? Which one y'all think it was? Which one did the father's will? The second one didn't go. The first one did, didn't he? So he, they, they said the first one. And they answered the question truthfully, and they answered it correctly, amen, and condemned themselves. When they said the first one, they were talking about themselves. Say amen. Say, say, when, when they were talking about the common people who heard the teaching of John, amen, and, bapt, and were baptized, but they themselves were not baptized. John would not baptize them because they were not righteous, amen. And so Jesus pronounces this conclusion. He said, truly, amen, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom before and ahead of you. For the, uh, the son who ultimately did the will of his father was the first son because he eventually obey. It doesn't matter when you obey, but you've got to trust and you've got to obey God. You can't do your own thing. Amen. you got to do what God has called us all to do. Amen. And to do the Father's will. Amen. Jesus likens the first son a -A -A Amen. Watch this now. To tax collectors and prostitutes. In other words, he said the worst of the worst. Repent and give their life to the Lord. The worst of the worst. They repent. The one, let me tell you something. A prostitute can become a preacher. Can I talk about it? Amen. A tax collector was a cheater. He cheated everybody out their money. But Jesus said they going into the kingdom before you. Amen. Because, watch this now. Because, uh, hallelujah, they are the first, the first son who, watch this now, who said they wasn't going to go, but they went. Amen. Said I wasn't going to tell nobody. 
but I couldn't keep it to myself. What the Lord has done for me. In other words, don't be ashamed to go for the Lord. Amen. Amen. But the son, amen, who actually did the will of his father was the first son. Amen. And, that, and that's the one he grouped the prostitutes and the tax collectors with. In other words, the worst of the worst are going to get into the kingdom, but you're not. Amen. Amen. For you said you was going to go. Watch this now, church. Church, you said you want to go. Religious leaders, you said you were going to go. Amen. Musicians, you said you was going to go, but you didn't go. Help me somebody. It's getting quiet in here. It's getting quiet in here. How many of y'all said you would go? But how many of y'all said you were going to go you ain't went yet? Ain't nobody raising their hand on none of that. Somebody say amen. I don't blame you. Just keep it to yourself. You know whether you win or not. But I'm here to tell you, God knows whether you win or not too. Say amen. For he sees everything. He knows all things. He's everywhere at the same time. And let me tell you something. We want God to come by here. Come on, I'm coming. He want God to come by here. Amen. We want God to stop by here. We want the visitation of the Holy Spirit with power. But let me tell you something. Sometimes God, amen, may not stop by here, but he'll meet you out there. You ever met God on the street? Help me somebody. Can I talk about this? Jesus said, what you have done to the least of these my brothers you've done also to me you might not find them in here all dressed up in a three piece suit you may not find them in here with the nice shoes and a nice scarf around our necks but you might find them out there with no coat and no shoes but that's the Lord you never know when you're entertaining somebody in unawares we've got to understand something now the outcasts I watch the outcasts of Jewish society amen they believed in John the Baptist they accepted the way of righteousness and in spite of their initial disobedience to the law amen they came on in when Jesus showed up on the scene they wanted to know they wanted to know say whose authority Jesus whose authority are you performing these acts by whose authority are you going to come in here Dr. Cheryl and tear up my house tear up the temple turn over the money changer and release all the doves and the goats and stuff by whose authority you did that whose authority allowed you to curse that tree amen because it did didn't have any figs on it. By who authority are you doing these things? Amen. And Jesus took uh, them to John the Baptist. Amen. Watch this. Now, why did he take them to John the Baptist? He said, tell me, was John the Baptist from heaven or was or not? Amen. They, and they thought about it. They said, well, if we say he was from heaven, then why do we kill him? If we say that he wasn't from heaven, the people going to kill us because they knew he was a prophet. They said, so we caught in the middle. We don't know what to say. So they said, we don't know. Then Jesus say, well, I tell you what, I won't tell you by what authority I do these things. In other words, if you can't explain to me why you did what you did, hey, man, then I can't tell you what authority I'm working with. Because the bottom line is I'm working under the same authority as John the Baptist. Can I talk about this thing a minute? And John's authority is my authority. It all comes from heaven. Can I talk about this thing a minute? If they're going to kill Jesus, amen, they're going to kill you. If they call him Beelzebub, they're going to call you Beelzebub. But don't you worry about it. You keep working under the authority God has given you. Preachers, the bishop gave you a book and he handed it to you. He said, take thy authority to preach the word and to teach the same. Didn't, I, didn't he do it? And you took that word and you preached. You better get out there and preach some word. You better get out in that vineyard and tell somebody about the love of God in Jesus Christ. Amen. Can I talk about this thing a minute? The parable of the two sons to, that sent to work in the vineyard is to show us. Amen. 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 And to show those who did not know John the Baptist to be of God. Amen. They were ashamed to know him. They didn't want to know him. They didn't want to know whether John was from, they knew he was from God but they was afraid to say it because they realized that the John's authority was the same as Jesus's authority and Jesus said if you don't recognize his authority then you don't recognize my authority. If you don't recognize Jesus' authority I can't expect you to recognize my authority. Can I help me somebody? You've got to recognize know who Jesus is. John 14 and 21. Give me that scripture, please. John 14, 21 says, Whosoever has my commands and keep them is the one who loves me. How many of y'all love God? Keep his commands. Keep his commands. I'm going to go somewhere with this. Watch this. The one who loves me will be loved by my father. And two, and I too, 
Not only is the Father going to love them, but I too will love them and show myself to them. <laughs> Watch this now. How much better to follow Jesus than by his love? You know why I follow God? You know why I work in his vineyard? Because he loves me. Say amen. He loves seeing me out on the street helping somebody. Amen. Talking to somebody. And that's what Gateway is all about, y'all. Amen. I'm hoping that every last one of you will show up, amen, on Wednesday night to get out here in the street and tell somebody not only about Gateway, but about the love of God in Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Church, say amen. Then do it because he loves you. Amen. Be, obey his commandments because he loves you. In conclusion, I'm going to say this. All of humankind, every last one of us, are like children who God brought up. Amen. Watch this now. Watch this now. You know how you bring up your kids? You bring up your kids in your house. You love them. You educate them. You protect them. You bring them up. God's brought y'all up. You as children. He brought you up. But every now and then, after bringing them up, feeding them, clothing them, educating them, protecting them, they going to rebel against what you ask them to do. You know what I'm saying? Can I talk about this thing a minute? You ever had your kids tell you no? See, we could say no, but we got in trouble still because it's no sir. No, no ma'am. Help me somebody. Say amen. In, 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 other, in other words, we must understand that every now and then, God, amen, when bringing up those kids, those kids try to rebel, especially those boy children. Am I right about Brother Otis? Them, them, them boy kids, the, the, the daughters, they love you. They're like, yes, ma'am. Yes, my daddy. Yeah, daddy. But them boy kids, pop, why I got to do? Why? You know, they feel strong after a while. Why I got to do this? Why, why you think, huh? Why I got to do this? Huh? Right? Right? Now, I don't know about y'all, but my daddy's get right in my chest. Am I right about it? We go, we go toe-to-toe, nose-to-nose, and blow-to-blow if he had to. Say amen. But I never raised my hand to him. Church, say amen. But y'all know children will rebel. Because to raise your hand to daddy and mama, that's death. They, I brought you in here. And here's the phone. 911. Say amen. Or do you need the direct number to child services? Say amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Don't let them get away with telling you, Hi, I, huh? Can you, are you kidding me? She's 10 years old, going to tell me what she ain't, is and ain't going to do? If you're getting that at 10, what you think you're going to get at 14, 15? But you raise them, you protect them, you feed them, you educate them, and then all of a sudden they're going to tell you what to do. You better buy me a cell phone. Uh, huh? Everybody else got them. I'm a social misfit. And I don't know about y'all, but I remember the time you had to run down the street with your quarters in your pocket and hope you got enough quarters to finish your call. Lord have mercy. Help me somebody. Say amen. And now they got cell phones. They ain't even got a job. Hey. Amen. Am I right about it? And sit up in here texting one another, laughing at other folk up in here. Somebody say amen. Uh-huh, I got you. I got you. Amen. Say amen. And, 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 and it happens, amen, 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 that, 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 that watch this now. And often it happens that the most rebellious of God's children are brought to repentance. Say amen. And become servants of the Lord. But you got to what? Recognize that God is going to deal with that what? Rebellion in hopes that they would turn it around and come wholehearted what? For the Lord. How many of y'all know that y'all were rebellious against God? Y'all wasn't always saved and even now you don't have a halo over your head. 
Help me somebody. Am I right about it? But, turn, but thanks be to God that in the midst of my rebellion, God still saw something in me, amen, that he could use for his glory. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm making up for all the years when I didn't know God, when I didn't give him the glory. Everything I do, I'm trying to give God the glory. I'm trying to let him use me so that he might get the glory. I'm trying to tell everybody about Jesus so that he might get the glory. I'm trying to save souls for the Lord Jesus Christ so that he might get the glory because he raised me he kept me he saved me he picked me up he turned me around he took my life and made something beautiful out of my life i've got to go in the vineyard and i got to work because the father has asked me to go i'm not going to tell him no and if i labor in the vineyard god's going to give me a crown amen and i got something i'm gonna leave you with if you haven't shouted this will make you shout go with me to the great commission can we look at that scripture for one minute can we look for at that scripture for one minute? Amen. Amen. Watch this now. I got to help folk to understand. Jesus, amen. That's the Mount of Olives. Jesus said, he, Jesus came to them and said, watch this. All authority. Uh-oh. Y'all didn't get it, did you? That should have shouted right there. The scribes, the Pharisees, and elders were always questioning his authority. Amen. Now watch this now. After he rose from the dead, the first words out of his mouth, amen, when he gave the great commission was all authority. Let me tell you something. God has all authority. Trump don't have it. The Congress don't have it. The Senate don't have it. The judges don't have it. Supreme Court don't have it. All authority belongs to God. Watch this now. And all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Now Jesus has all authority. And he's commissioning. Watch this now. And as soon as he tells them that all authority is his. All authority has been given to him. Amen. Now watch this now. After he made that statement to clear up the authority issue, don't you let nobody tell you what you can and cannot do for God. God tell dictates what you can do for him. Somebody say amen. And you have the authority to go and lay hands on the sick. You have authority to preach the word, to tell somebody about the love of God in Jesus Christ, to bring somebody out of darkness into the marvelous light. You have that authority God has given it to you because he delegated the authority to you right here. Watch this. In the 18th verse, he said, then Jesus came to them and said, amen, all authority in heaven and on earth is given unto me. Now he delegates the authority. He says, therefore, go ye and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you even until the end of the age. Tell me somebody. We've got to understand. Take that authority that was given you and go and tell somebody about Jesus. Don't try to figure out whether or not you should go. By that time, you probably done missed the opportunity to go. Just go. Turn your neighbor and say, just go. Just go. Just go. Just go. Turn your neighbor and say, just go. Just go. Now, Nike said, just do it. Jesus said, just go. And let me tell you something. I'll go if I have to go by myself. So I'll go if I have to go all by myself. If my mama don't go and my father don't go and my sister don't go and my brother don't go, I'll go if I have to go all by myself. And the only thing I can say is send me, Lord. Send me, Lord. You ain't got to beg me to go. You know how sometimes you got to beg folk to do stuff? Can you go to the store for me? I think about it. Sitting there eating your dinner. Can you go to the store for me? Uh, well, where I got to go? To the store. Well, how far is the store? Then here come that, here come that great question. You going to give me gas money? Gas is high nowadays. Say amen. But turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't question. Just go. Just go. Don't think about it. 
Because if you think about it, you might be like the second son and you won't go. Just say, I'm going. You can go with me. Or you can, huh? How many of y'all leave folk home when they ain't ready to go to church? I leave, huh? I done left them home a many day. Y'all ready? Sunday school starts at what? 9.30. I left the house and went on. Say amen. You leaving us? Yep, and you got a car right there. Say amen. I'll see you when you get there. I'm not going to be late for Sunday school fooling with y'all. You know the next Sunday, though, they ready to go. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Because church for us, for 45 to an hour and a half away. Say amen. I'll leave them in a minute. I'll still do it today. Amen. I'll, if I tell you I'm going to be at your house to pick you up at 11, and I get there at 11, I guarantee you got to 1102 to come out that door because at 11, uh huh, 1101 and 59 seconds, I'm starting the car. And I guarantee you, I'll give you two minutes and I'm gone. I ain't gonna call you no more because you know I'm sitting out there. Folk know you're sitting out there. Y'all laughing, but Jesus has been sitting in the car. Outside your house, waiting for you to go. Just saying, why don't they just go? Just come on. And what I like about him, and I'm done, is he, if you go, he said, I'm going with you. Say amen. And even though you think you are alone, you're never alone. Jesus is standing right by your side. He'll comfort and he'll guide you. He'll give you words to say out your mouth. But don't leave him sitting in the car too long because he might leave you. Then you will have to go by yourself. Turn your neighbor to neighbor. Whatever he want me to do. And all he says is, go work in the vineyard. The vineyard is not in here. And I don't see no, nothing growing out of the floor around here. The vineyard is out there. And they're dying. And they're crying. And they're hurting. And they need direction. How many of y'all been to the nursing home lately? How many of y'all been to prison lately? How many of y'all been to the hospital lately? Amen. Come on now. That's the vineyard. How many of y'all been out in the street seeing folk, amen, in need of a word, amen? How many of y'all ride past church members on the bus stop? <sighs> yeah, I know I got some folk in here. Say amen. Amen. That's a vineyard opportunity. Amen. Praise God. Church, say amen. 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 I'm done. Didn't make you shout, but didn't make you think. You can shout next week. And what I like about it, for those people that can't really, don't have the maneuverability anymore, because they that's a reality. Your vineyard is the cell phone. It's the media. Get on there. Send out a, a word of the day to somebody. Send somebody a scripture that you know is hurting. You can't go. Watch this. But you can send a text. You can make a call. Say amen. Say, how you doing, Mother Hinton? How you been? Come on now. That's vineyard work. Say amen. And I guarantee you, you'll make somebody's day. Amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Amen. Continue to work in the vineyard. You know what I like about it? You don't have to put on coveralls. You don't even have to take a shovel. You don't have to take a pickaxe, but Rama. You don't need a lawnmower. You just need to go. Just go. And take the love of God with you. You might not know one scripture, but you do know that, that Jesus loves them. Say amen. And that's enough. Because people want to be loved. People want to be needed. Mm -hmm. 
two powerful words. Love and need. I love you. I need you. That goes a long way. Help me somebody. Am I know what I'm talking about? Jesus is the answer. For the world today. Above him there's no other. 